<laughs> the jungle. The jungle, huh? But when it gets dark, I go inside. So. You do? I'm, and I'm scared of them niggers. I don't like them. <laughs> but you do. You do your reservation is. What are you going to do? Change the whole world in 2005. <laughs> what do you want to do about it, Daniel? If I could change the world, I'd send all these niggers back over to Africa where they come from. <laughs> send all these Mexicans back to Mexico. We'd have an all-white nation, and we wouldn't have to have so much crime and poverty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do it, too. Yeah. Benji, what are you going to do about New Year's religion? Funny how now Gary the Retard has the same reservation for New Year's. Yes, that, he, yeah. he thinks that'll clean up the country and mm. make it good again. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I think I do that, too, for my New Year's reservation. <laughs> you don't like them! Uh-huh. <laughs> What's your New Year's reservation? I love that. I like my favorite part of that is when Daniel goes, uh, when it gets dark, I go inside, and guy goes, you do, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but Daniel's doing a lot of traveling. Now he's yeah. in New Orleans. <laughs> What's your New Year's reservation is? My resolution is the S-60 sucks, and they can go to hell for a while and give us their... <laughs> And the FCC can kiss my and house their ass because they're nothing but slut, faggot, whore, <laughs> freaking A, bitches, and they don't leave my baby, house their, I want to go at the dinner that they can go to hell for a while give a shit. <laughs> I'm in the tune. Daniel. I'll get a damn. Did you hear that, Daniel? I, I heard it. <laughs> I hear this. She's going to have to go wash her mouth out with some soul fancy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Sorry, Daniel. It's just that they're pissed to be off. Yep. I know. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, Daniel. Does yeah, that upset yeah. you? She's uh, <laughs> of- offended Daniel, who's using niggers and spigs and wops and coons. Yeah. Whatever he can think of to hey, say. Yeah. That offends me. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, Daniel. Yeah, her mouth needs to be washed out with soap. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You're offending me. <laughs> what, what, what? He needs a flamethrower for his mouth. <laughs> uh. My New Year's reservation is I want my girlfriend to get out of prison to get her act together, you know what I mean? <laughs> I thought I was saying who you was going to get married, Gary. Yeah, she wants to get married, but I ain't going to do it right now until t- 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 she can prove to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so she proves that she can straighten up, you know. She's yeah, got to straighten up for you, Amaya. Right? She's going to have to do a lot. She's going to, right. have, to get, she has to get herself a job and everything else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. okay. Happy New Year to you. And when do you have Happy, Happy New Year to you, too, Daniel. Happy New Year, all of you. And you, too, Gary. You, too. Bye. All right, bye. All right, bye. I want a tape of that conversation between Gary the retard and that prison girlfriend about well, how she has to uh, straighten up. Yeah, if he's lecturing her. If they get married, I want to read that wedding announcement. Mr. and Mrs. the retard are pleased to announce <laughs> the engagement of their son. Can you imagine that conversation? To straighten your stuff up. Huh. If you want a man like me, you're going to have to straighten your stuff up. I got to see her. Yeah, I'm working on that. I'm trying to get her in here. What could she look like? As soon as she's out of jail, she's right on this show. We're going to whisk her right out of that prison right here. But do you imagine uh, uh, what she might look like? Okay, who's hotter, her <laughs> or high pitch Eric's girlfriend? <laughs> that's the guy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, let's have that beauty contest. <laughs> who's high pitch? <laughs> <laughs> this is Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> On the New Year's Eve show, uh, the Regis, uh, Regis looked like he just wanted to get out of there. He didn't. He was like reading off cue cards. Yeah, they said he wasn't even outside. He was in a studio somewhere. Guy's seventy years old. He don't want to get the flow. Well, Dick Clark used to be outside all the time. Hmm, now he has a stroke. <laughs> He's I, weather beaten. I feel bad for Regis. So the, 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 that uh, finale at Apprentice, man, they were throwing him around like a puppet. Did you really? See that? Yeah, like Trump just ordered him to do stuff. Like Regis, go in the audience and talk to people. <laughs> all right, Donald, uh, let's talk to people. I'm pulling some of the Regis stuff now, Howard, but uh, he just had nothing to say. They would do like a shot of Times Square, and he would go, there the people are in Times Square. They've been here for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. This will all be cleaned up by tomorrow. Oh, you hopefully. Know, like, yeah, I mean, just like stuff like that. You know, what's to say? It's the most retarded event in the on the planet. I have never understood it. More retarded than Gary thinking he's going to get the flu over the phone. Right. I mean, a bunch of people from out of town, 85, 90% from out of town, standing and doing nothing. Yeah, they come in to stand. You and can't they even start drink. Early in the afternoon, and they can't drink. Or I wonder how they go to the bathroom. They just—I think they just pee on the ground. <laughs> Wear a diaper. Yeah. <laughs>
Wear an adult diaper. <laughs> like Wendy throwing up, just wherever it's necessary. They said adult diaper sales were through the roof, New Year's Eve. <laughs> I was selling them on the corner. That that Regis show was the worst one I've ever seen. And I, I rarely get to see them, but they had a... The big event was going to be, they're bringing back a band. It was Earth, Wind, and Fire. Was that the finale? It was like the big thing. Like, like Earth, right, Wind, and Fire? Right Can't you see them on any cruise ship? Well, right after New Year's, they go, and <laughs> now here's the big thing. Here's Earth, Wind, and Fire. And it, I said it was nine obese black men that used to be Earth, Wind, and Fire. W why is that a big... Are they big? I have no idea. They used to be, but I, mean, I don't maybe, think anybody cares now. I think they might you be... sure it was at uh, 1984 New Year's Eve? <laughs> <laughs> it was like a halftime show. You know why Earth, Wind, and Fire kind of relevant again? Because they sing that song that Outkast made famous again. The song, I like the way you She moves. moves. That's Earth, Wind, and Fire? That's yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's their song. They sampled it. So... So they got him to sing that song. That's what they were doing. Howard, you don't remember? Were you that drunk? We were goofing on it. Oh, yeah, I was I, I wasted. You wow. were that loaded? Yeah, I don't remember seeing Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's, I just saw a bunch of black guys. That's funny, because we were goofing on th that exact performance. I remember laying on the couch, looking up, and seeing a bunch of black guys. I got nervous when we were in Times Square. Are they in my apartment? <laughs> you thought you had actually landed there. Yeah, I, I didn't know what was going on in the apartment. <laughs> it, it was really weird, because all the guys in the band... Put on their 1984 uh, outfits. Oh, and they squeezed but, into them. Howard, the lead singer, his he had a really big belly, and he's wearing like a black T-shirt and the, that bald guy. Well, the guy that's got the br it's bald, but he's got like, long Philip Bailey? Yeah, yeah. That might have been Maurice White. Oh, uh, Maurice. That's White. Maurice White. Yeah, but what happens is it's Mo White. He was the skinniest dude around. Yeah, and the I know. long, the long black leather trench coat and the black T-shirt, and his belly was really hanging over. They're all in leather pants. That's and a stuff. shame. <laughs> Damn, they let themselves go. <laughs> There's a time to move out of I recently camp. saw the spinners. That was depressing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I saw. I think I saw uh, these guys going around calling themselves the Temptations over in Atlantic City. <laughs> <laughs> they have to wear the name on their jackets because none of them is original. Yeah, they right. walk around in jackets. Satin, those bad satin. They call them satin jackets, but you know it's not satin. <laughs> They're and, all Puerto Rican. Man. And it says Temptations on the, on the jacket. And you go, hey, I think those are the Temptations. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't know. You would think they were Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that Earth, Wind, and Fire? No, look at the jacket. <laughs> yeah. One of the Temptations is Asian. Yeah. <laughs> There's a comedian who does that joke. He says that, uh, I saw the Temptations the other night. They were all white. <laughs> Sal was telling me, you know some guy who's doing tsunami jokes. Really? That's oh, dangerous. Yeah. It's one of our uh, one of our ex interns. He's going on stage doing tsunami jokes. What's funny about that? I don't know. He was saying that you know even in these Where's times the humor? we have to find humor even in the worst of times. No, oh. is that the preface? That's and then you... so I preface this. I preface this with a little uh, morality lecture. In order to find he, in, when, even in the worst of tragedies, if we make fun of it, it'll make it easier. The job right. of a comedian. Yeah. All right, did you hear about the guy who perished in the tsunami? Right. Anybody here have anyone killed in that tsunami? Well, it's funny because everyone's trying to jump on it. So I was listening to eh, 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 this morning on the way in. Yeah. And on the comedy channel, they whipped out, there's an Adam Sandler bit where he surfs the tsunami. So they were playing that this morning because it's now relevant. Notch Johnson surfed the tsunami yeah. in Son of the Beach. Hmm. I love to hear the tsunami jokes. See what's uh, going on. Where's the humor? Why don't people in Thailand take baths? Because they wash up on shore. Come on, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Are we dealing with that kind of material? I don't know. I don't know what we're dealing with. Let me see. What I got here? Oh, hey, talking about the tsunami? Yeah. This is why everyone... What's up? No, you want to hear one of the jokes he said? Yeah. He was saying, what's the official drink of Sri Lanka? What is it? A mudslide. See, that's not even funny. <laughs> you laughing. Sal, is this guy you? No, it's not me. Hold on, Howard. Ricky yeah. Christie was there. That's Sal's joke. No, it is. Oh. That sounds like your joke. That sounds That's a bad joke, dude. It's a horrible joke. I didn't do it on stage. Wait, here was another one. He said all our... No, he did say this one. He goes, all our lives we're saying these people smell, they smell, they finally get a bath and it's costing us $55 billion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's awful! <laughs> but Sal, Sal told me last uh, last Wednesday he went out to a comedy show. It's the worst thing ever. <laughs> that is terrible. It's the truth. You can't say that. Was that yours or Sal? He, the mudslide one is Sal's because he told yeah, me he said he tried funny. it out. Yeah. And he wow. said he's but he was proud of himself because the crowd hated it. But then he brought him back. He got him back after oh, that. Way to go. Yeah. I went right into my marriage. That's another tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> what else did this guy say? No, that's what I that was, was just coming in joke? to say. That was no. Sal's the mudslide. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. was another one. Oh, um, you hear the new slogan of Sri Lanka? 
Now you Siri. Now you, now you don't. Now you what? Now you Siri. Now you don't. Uh, now you Siri? Yeah, Shri. Uh, how do you pronounce? I don't even know how to pronounce that freaking word. Now you Shri. Is it Shri? Yeah. Shri. Now you don't. Shri. Now you sh- now, now, now you Shri it. Now you Shri it. Now you don't. Oh. Right, he keeps calling us Siri, Lanka. Yeah. That might be the worst joke I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I want my money back for that dinner. <laughs> better than dirty work, Artie. Wait, was that last one yours too? Dirty Works on sale on oh, Amazon.com. That 90s. was your joke. Yes, well, of course. No, it that was. wasn't my joke. The that was Shri- Ryan's joke. <laughs> All right. Shree it. Now you don't. You shree it. Now you don't. <laughs> How much is the uh, Dirty Work on Amazon.com? <laughs> it's probably it's probably 80 cents. I have a printout of it. 19 cents for a used copy of Dirty Work. <laughs> well, and nobody's you. buying well, it. It's used. Someone used it at least. The postage is more than the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh now, now I'll tell you why everyone hates Star Jones. This woman is such a jerk. I mean, you know, whenever you what put... What has she done now? Well, she's... she's ta- they're talking... Of course, the Yentas all got together to talk about the tsunami. Right. And uh, she's like, I was in that part of the world a month ago, and I guess God, you know... In other words, God held off the tsunami so she'd be oh, safe. he would have had it earlier, but Star Jones was there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. God wanted to make sure Star Jones got back to the United States. And so many people who want to help, and you don't know and whether... And the animals. Oh, I know, the animals. The animals. Absolutely. I mean, they six senses. I mean, when you watch, when you think of that, there's so much more in the world that we don't really understand. Well, very few animals like died. To, humans yeah. li- used to be like that, I think. We've, we're just so distracted now. We want our information from computers and machines. You know, we used to have our... That girl was on Survivor now. She's a whole expert. We used to have the senses of animals, but uh, we want our information from computers, so we we don't have the animal senses anymore. Shut up. (laughs) You're a bitch. We want our information from computers, so we don't have... What? In other words, all of the animals in the tsunami didn't get killed because they had a sixth sense. They knew to go up high. They had that built in. Yeah, I got that part. So we lost it with the computer because we want our information fast. We got the computer how many weeks ago? All right. We got the computer, uh, let's see, 1980-something. And wiped out our senses. Yeah, otherwise, <laughs> we used to know how to predict a tsunami. Were you predicting earthquakes uh, back in the 80s? Yes. <laughs> Star Jones, fortunately, still has her elephant sense. The elephants in <laughs> Star Jones are now safe. Yeah, uh, Star Jones had sought high ground. <laughs> yeah. I think animals are smart because they know enough not to watch the view. <laughs> My dog runs out of the room when the view is on. Senses so... So sharp that we- isn't it great this show? I mean, isn't it good that we have these four to teach us and discuss the daily events? Yeah. It has no redeeming value. No, this show. none. It's not funny. It's not informative. The it's- redeeming value is it keeps these four employed. It's, it's not mm-hmm. funny. It's it, it's not fun. We could smell and hear something coming, but we just don't anymore. We we rely on machines to tell us. Now. I smell star coming <laughs> with a big dumb comment. Mm. Well, the blessings and the prayers of, you know, our nation oh, it's so, is absolutely. with them. And I thank God every day because one month prior. Yeah, absolutely. I was there. The person who was actually on television. Oh, so they airlifted her into the tsunami. One month prior. <laughs> one month prior. If she would have stayed, they would have had some higher ground to go. <laughs> What's wrong with saying a month ago I was there? One month prior. Well, come on. She's fancy. Right. She was in the Maldives. One month prior. Exactly. It, it, one on month. her honeymoon. Yes. God, God bless See, us. my mother always used to God say, blesses. when it's your time to die, you'll die. And I, and when, that's why, because I didn't want to go on a plane. I used right. to say, well, what if I'm on the plane? It's the pilot, pilot's time to die. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. Star isn't having any of this laughter. This is a very, very serious very topic. Very serious to her. That God other, saved her. It's all about her. That other idiot went, that's a good point. <laughs> The, the idiot goes, that's a good point, and starts like, uh, no, no. Um, You're making God, light. Making light of what God did for me. Right. He held off a tsunami for a, a, a month. Yeah, he, say, he saved me and my creepy boyfriend, and 180,000 people died. Husband <laughs> to you, Artie. I'm he sorry. had points. Yes, she he says, celebrate the glory <laughs> of life every single <laughs> day. The president. Mm, thank you for that. Thank Can you, you believe God, she actually has the 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 balls to say God blesses? How did 180,000 people, 180, people die, but God blesses oh, her. God yeah, does. he's particularly a fan of hers, right. not those 180,000 people. Right. God's blessing. How yeah, tell have... that to the 180,000 dead. Yeah, yeah, she should be fine for that comment.
That's how offensive it is. Yes, I did. Right, what's yours? My new favorite song is uh, from Jill Scott, Living My Life Like It's Golden. And that is my resolution for the year. I'm going to celebrate every blessing, every single thing that I can do to make sure that God knows how much I appreciate this life and nothing and no one's going to stop me. So I'm living my life like it's golden. Isn't that nice? Yay! I love her. She's such a good person. Yes. Yay. With everything going on in the world. Hmm. And then I was saved by the tsunami. <laughs> she got saved. It was God's blessing. Well, she missed it by Yay. a month. A month. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my beautiful husband. He wanted to make good and sure I was home, so he waited a month to, to make the world uh, right. go crazy. Man, she didn't miss it by a day. She missed it by a month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God wanted to make sure her feet were firmly planted back on uh, the United States soil. Yeah. So he waited a month before he killed all those people. <laughs> Good one. God's blessing. <laughs> all right, we got to take a break. We'll come back. I got a bunch of things to get to, and I. You know what my favorite uh, story was while we were away? The breakup of Ellen's relationship and her falling in love with Portia de Rossi. Well, that was a good one, but that certainly wasn't the best story while we were away. What was the best? The best story was um, James Brolin beating up Diane Lane. Oh, what happened? That was the best story. No, I love that story. What happened? Is is his name James Brolin? Yeah. The the guy married to Barbara Streisand? No, no. James Brolin's son is what is it? Josh. Oh, Josh Josh Josh. Brolin. Josh is the kid. Josh Brolin's married to Diane Lane, who's like the hottest piece of ass on the planet who I would just worship. That's the broad from Tuscan Sun. Yeah, Yeah, and unfaithful and all that. Right, yeah, yeah. She's hot. So I'm reading the paper that there was a a bit of a problem, I guess. Uh, They had to call the police because he was knocking her around a bit. And, uh, yeah, and I'm like, this son of a bitch, man. You know how many guys would die to be and with her? And you know what he was upset about? What? He thought he had gotten a job. You know, <laughs> some movie or TV show pilot or something. He should know better. And then <laughs> it turned out that they changed their minds and decided to go another way. So he smacked her, right? So he smacked her. This yeah, son of a bitch. <laughs> I, yeah, you time. got that Tuscan son? I get nothing. <laughs> God damn you. Get over here. Horse. We're going another way. We're go- uh, what's his name, Josh? Josh, bro. Josh, uh, you know how your dad had to marry Barbara Streisand to keep things going? Well, you know that show you were going to get? We, we decided to go another way. <laughs> what do you mean another way? The producers. What do you mean you changed the plot? No, 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 no. Another way. In other words, we're going without you. <laughs> Where's my wife? The producers opted for an actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we decided you didn't have enough juice being James Brolin's son maybe and Barbara <laughs> Streisand's stepson. Maybe your dad can get you a job at Amco. <laughs> Talk to Barbara Streisand. Maybe she'll make another movie. She'll put you in Meet the Fockers 7. <laughs> but we're not interested. God damn it. Where's Diane Lane? <laughs> Beat her up. That bitch gets more movies than... Why can't they give me a goddamn movie? Get over here, you stinking... I wish... A year from now, I'll use the C word when I do this. But... <laughs> yeah, write this down. Let's write file. that down. Write down, I wanna... write down in a year, I want to reenact the Diane Lane, <laughs> Josh, Josh Brolin. Brolin breakup. I'm going to rebring it up. <laughs> well, we don't know if they're broken up. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think she forgave him. She yeah. realized it was completely overblown, the incident. By the time the cops got there, she was uh, <laughs> oh, she terribly upset. Terribly upset. She'd made the call. Yeah. That's what but, Head but of Nussbaum used to do that, too. It frightened her. Right. Head of Nussbaum used to do that uh, all the way until she looked like Vito Antifermo yes. after fighting Hagler. <laughs> yeah, uh, all the way up until she had a cauliflower ear. Yeah, right. Exactly. She looked like Rocky Graziano. <laughs> I've, uh, she's, the police would answer those. I made a horrible mistake. <laughs> I made a horrible mistake. Nothing's wrong. Joel's inside killing the kid. The, the incident was very overblown. Yeah, right. well, I understand there's two children in the house. Well, one now, technically. Yeah, right. <laughs> One's, one's brain dead. Now, if you guys leave, Joel has to bury our daughter. <laughs> Mon- the monster. The hideous monster I live with. Ma'am, are you all right? Aside from having no cartilage in my nose, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. Keep protecting the guy. Yeah. But anyway, they say that it was not. It was a very minor incident. Right. More of a pushing. Than more of a pushing. Oh, a pushing. So he gets turned down on the job, and she probably came over and said, hey, you know, don't feel too bad, and... And he started pushing her. But although, you know, he probably was like, hey, you know, you get a lot of work. Don't tell me not to feel bad. I'm going to push you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, you. I'm going to push you now. I'm pushing. I'm pushing you. 
I could hit you, but I'm going to push you. Push More of a push. I like that. He pushed her. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Didn't Tommy Lee push Pam down some yeah, steps? Yeah, I think, you know, when you run into his fist, he pushes <laughs> Yeah, right. Everything's all right, officer, but I must drink through the straw. <laughs> I'm not taking any solid food. What did you push her into? A, a, a meat cutter? <laughs> I'd love to interview them. Oh, I don't think they'll be doing any interviews right away. I was like, son of a bitch, you know? Diane Lane is such a sexy, She's sexy yeah. I think, vibrant woman. And that's what she gets for marrying well, you know a pretty what? boy. What's really sad is I think Barbara Streisand hooked the two of them up. <laughs> Mm. Thanks a lot, Babs. Yeah. <laughs> you must meet my out-of-work son-in-law. <laughs> my unemployable. <laughs> He's a pusher. Can you imagine the show they told him that he wasn't right for? It must be the crappiest show, too. It must be like, you know, you're not right for Stargate 9. <laughs> <laughs> you're not right for Pacific Coast Blue. Uh, yeah, something that wasn't going to work out anyway. Yeah, it was a Son of the Beach reunion. <laughs> You're not right for Malibu Patrol. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. What do you mean I'm not right for that? The ten millionth pilot we sh shoot on Hawaii. You're a not right for a that. A monkey is right for that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a different way, the way of a monkey. We went with China doll. I'm sorry. <laughs> we hired a piece of sheetrock. Yeah. We were doing a Xena War Princess <laughs> reunion, but we decided to go with Mini-Me, Vern you Troyer. Know what? We discovered <laughs> that that orangutan <laughs> Clyde was free. <laughs> We dug up James Dean. <laughs> Sorry, you can't be on the Paris Hilton special. We've gone another way. <laughs> we needed someone to play an elf on the Nick and Jessica. <laughs> Christmas. But you're not short enough. Oh, dear. No, I would love to have seen what exactly. In other words, so he gets a call. I guess a call from his agent. Yeah, I forget exactly the story, but I think they were at a party or something. Like oh, after they tell him at the party. After he got the news, I guess mm. they were supposed to go out to a party, so they had a few cocktails. At home? No, at the party. At the party. Yeah. And then I guess they went home, and she was trying to comfort him because he had lost the job. And, uh, he Honey, I don't know if I can get over not being in BJ and the Bear reunion. It's <laughs> <laughs> my big break. I was going to be in the new Beverly Hillbillies. I was Jethro. <laughs> You know, I was up what a for, loser. You know, I was up for the remake of Hardcastle and McCormick. <laughs> well, Diane Lane probably said, you know, hey, this guy's happening. He's, you know, it, it, he used to just be James Brolin's son, which wasn't anything great. But then all of a sudden, when Barbara Streisand got involved. Then it, it like, made him happening. Yeah, then, and chicks get full. They're like, oh, this guy's got a lot going on. He's good looking. And look at these Barbara Streisand. And Something's got to be going on with him. Then you go home and the guy can't get any work. <laughs> yeah, to pull a Diane Lane, you got you to gotta have stuff going on. Jesus Christ. Can I even have William Shatner's career? <laughs> Can I get a TJ Hooker? <laughs> get over here. That's always a weird move. She's probably trying to be supportive. Yeah. You know, things aren't so oh, things aren't so bad, are they? Oh, <laughs> you just got signed to a five picture deal and things aren't so bad. Come over here. You know what? I'm gonna push you around. <laughs> I'm not gonna hit you, I'm gonna push you. Josh, your life is too good. Come here, no. I need to push you. You Josh. think this is easy for me? <laughs> I'm Barbara Streisand's son in law. And I can't get arrested. Yeah, and, and you, you just keep getting work. <laughs> Josh, Because you got a vagina. <laughs> get over here. I'm going to push you. Josh, we have bad news. They're changing the name of the show from three and a half men to two and a half men. <laughs> no, I just eliminated a guy. It was three men and a baby. We're going with two men and a baby. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> Two's company. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to push you. Don't press my button. Don't push me. So has there been any more press releases on that? I mean, that no, that that was about it. That they were, she was already embarrassed, and she didn't want the cops to do anything. But you know, in those situations, somebody has to be arrested. So was he arrested? Called. Yeah, he was. Oh, and and now is, is are they going to have to take well, him to court? Well, I guess he'll have to go to court. Mm -hmm. well, he, can, he, can, he can no longer say he can't get arrested in that town. <laughs> <laughs> I got arrested, honey. Hey, I got arrested, Ma. Yeah. Called up Barbara Streisand. I got arrested. Oh, good, honey, you got work? No, 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 I got arrested. <laughs> I pushed someone. <laughs> You know, you guys always said I couldn't get arrested in town? I did. I did. I'm not dumb like everybody said. He's a good-looking dude, this kid. You know, he yeah. looks like his dad, I'm but, sure. like, even better. And, and uh, you know, he, he probably thinks, listen, I'm supposed to be getting work. I'm good-looking. The fact that he's great-looking makes me enjoy the story that much more. I can handle things. I'm smart. I'm Josh Brolin's like son. Says. James Brolin's son. Well, James no, Brolin's I'm son. I'm smart, and I want respect. 
Oh, could you imagine how pathetic Josh Brolin's son's going to be? <laughs> Let's not think about that. Diane Lane is so hot. God damn. I wouldn't push her. No. I'd lick her in such a dirty area. I'd <laughs> That's clean hot. it. Oh, God. I'd say, honey, look at my tongue. I've cleaned your whole area. She'd be calling the police because you're cleaning her yeah. too much. <laughs> She'd say, uh, you have to come over and arrest Howard Stern, my husband. i go, why is that? Uh. He's licking me to death. <laughs> it work. I'm having too many orgasms. He won't stop cleaning me. <laughs> yeah, he's cleaning me with his tongue like a cat. <laughs> That's hot. That painful itch is gone. That's right? hot. Yeah. Right. That's the good side of it. Why complain? I have to call the police. You're banging me too much. <laughs> If you bang me one more time, I'm going to have to call 911. You're loving me too much. <laughs> Your love is smothering me. I can't breathe. Comforting me. Hello, please come here. I can't breathe. My husband is smothering me with love. <laughs> Listen. And I'd be so proud of her. Like, you know, I'd, I'd only root you for her. You just go out all the time. Yeah, I'd be like I'd parade her around. <laughs> well, you, you, that's a jackpot. A hot chick who makes money? Come on. Diane Lane would be like, oh, there's Sean Penn. Let's go say hello. Mm, okay. Why not? Absolutely. Why not? <laughs> I'm with Diane Lane. You're paying the bills and I'm having sex with you. Yeah. You make money and I have sex with you. Jackpot. Oh, she's so hot and sexy. I can't imagine pushing her. Except onto the bed in her heels. Maybe she misunderstood. With her ass up in the air. <laughs> he was pushing her onto the bed and <laughs> she got afraid. That's what I would have told the cops. Hey, look at her. She's hot. I, I was pushing her onto the bed. After sex, I could see pushing her into the kitchen. It's a right. God damn. Then I go to all her movie openings with her and I'd be I'd be proud of her. I'd be like, you know, look at you. You're my you're my wife and look at all the wonderful things. But she's with a guy who's an actor who can't get you know, he got pushed out of, you know, B J and the Bear. She should know better than to marry him an actor. How can you find out what project he got turned down from? Oh God. You need me... to do that. All right, I will do, I will look that up. Hey, you you gotta get busy. <laughs> Lois Lane. <laughs> that was pretty funny to me when I was reading it. He got turned down for a project. Yeah. Sift project. Through, sift through all the tsunami reports to get to that. <laughs> How many projects do you think he's been turned down to to the point they got to start shoving her right. around? I mean, it must have been a lot. It's the fifth one this week. <laughs> you don't do that after one. Well, what has he been in? What, what, he what? was in the uh, Wrigley Spearman commercial, I think. <laughs> no, he had a TV show that lasted for about a minute called uh, Mr. Sterling, I think. <laughs> and then it got canceled. Oh, Mr. So Sterling. he wasn't Sterling. Mr. Sterling got canceled. <laughs> that was my big show. I'm pushing you. Damn it. And so, yeah, he's been looking for a new Damn job it. since then. Mr. Sterling, that's the show I wore my electric bra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Damn it. Where are you? What the hell that whole thing went down? I could, I would give anything to interview those two. Well, they both admitted there was some drinking, like I said. Right. That, you know, they'd had a few But she called the glasses. cops. And yeah, apparently he has a very bad temper. Wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm good looking and I can't get work. Yeah, that'll upset you. Thank God a combination of drinking and show business failure doesn't affect me that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's surprised you haven't pushed that. You know how many broads I would have beat yeah. up? You we should be pushing people right now. <laughs> Dirty work. <laughs> Dirty work. I'll take give me a shot of Jack Daniels. I want to push you. Fortunately for you, you weren't dating anyone during the filming of Dirty Work. <laughs> how many hookers would have been beat? Didn't so. you turn down Josh Brolin for Dirty Work? I did, actually. Yeah, he was supposed to play a part of the devil on the hood of the car. <laughs> yeah, you, you turned it down, so we went to Josh Brolin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. If Stern doesn't want to be on the hood of the car, I'll be on it. Josh Brolin, goddammit. We went a different That's way. right, he's trying to jumpstart that career. I'll yeah. be on the hood. We went another way. So then the cop showed up, and she kind of said, listen, I shouldn't have called you guys. But if right, she called the cops. it's embarrassing, yeah. and uh, I, I overreacted, you know, the usual excuses. If I was James Brown, I'd push Barbara Streisand around. I don't think you do anything <laughs> to Barbara Streisand but what she tells you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's well under control. Yeah. He's I've seen him. that house in Malibu. I drove by it once, Her one of her places. <laughs> I'd be very nice if I was James Brown. Come here, young man. Hoity toity. Barbara Streisand, imagine having sex with that. Oh. Hey, V. He has That's, to keep her happy. I don't care how nice your house is. Yeah, you know what? I'd rather get my own place. Couldn't he get Josh into Fockers? 
Meet the Fockers? I don't think there's any room for him in the Fockers. There was Who no... Was he going to be? He couldn't be that Ben Stiller role? Well, Ben Stiller's got that. Uh. That's true. Guess who the audience won't be meeting? Josh Brolin. <laughs> Meet the Brolins. <laughs> You're meeting the Fockers, but not Josh Brolin. Cronin couldn't shove him into that house with China and uh, That's Vern Troyer? where he belongs. Right. <laughs> you know what it is? He's hanging around with Diane Lane and all her fancy A-list friends. And Barbara. And Barbara. And he's like, everyone's doing all these exciting things. Why am I not doing anything good? Yeah. I can't, I'm getting turned down by some, 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 you know, from Son of the Beach. Right. He's got a lot of pressure. Honey, don't feel bad. What is it, stepmama? I have some work for you. Thank God. My bushes need trimming. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, gorgeous. Are you working yet? I'm going to push you, too. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. You're such a handsome boy chick. You can't get work, you stupid guy. I found you a wife to have to find you a job, too. Yeah. Go check the pH in my pool. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's doing. <laughs> that was my favorite Why story. bother to work? Your mom, your stepmom's Barbara Streisand, and your <laughs> wife is dying late. Sit there. Nah, Relax. Until somebody calls you. A lot of guys, their egos involved, you know. You, but you can't push a woman. Relax. Especially a hot chick like that. Yeah, no Sit matter what there happens. until somebody calls. <laughs> you don't hit a broad. All right, I got to take a break, and then we'll come back. And uh, we got a ton of stuff to get to, and, and the and the and the day is slipping away quickly. We'll be back right after this. Uh, hello, this is Riley. Uh, I thought I would call you, man. Leave you a message. Tell you to tell Howard. Please, please, please do not give me a job. Oh, uh, your staff? Oh, uh, I don't uh, need it otherwise. It's very serious. Please do not give me a job. You understand? Because maybe I don't know nothing, know how. But, you know, you tell Robin I'm going to love her till I die. Because she feels uh, pleasing to the warmth of my bosom, you see? And to Howard, the only reason I love him is because he's running neck and neck with me on being a dirty bastard. Bye. It's the show that everyone's been waiting for, the interim beauty pageant. Hey, now. I got to say, this crop of young, hey hot now. interns was exceptionally beautiful. Nice. Not that I noticed, but other people told me. Ah, you heard that. Yeah. I got to admit, this is some batch. And uh, I, I have to say, I think this is the best-looking group ever. It was a very good-looking group. Yeah. And talented. And a hard-fought competition. Mm-hmm. Very close. I think within a point. Yeah. Nice. Better, yes. looking, better looking than Benji's group? That's right. <laughs> Benji brought his whole group down. <laughs> hmm. uh, Sharon, you're on the air. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to call you back to tell you I got through to the radio uh, station from York, Pennsylvania, and I told him that I spoke with you, and he said, what does he say? And I said, well, he doesn't know either, that he's always followed the guidelines of what he can say and what he can't say. And he said, well, Howard is pretty darn good at, you know, pushing, you know, where you're going to get people to subscribe. And then he says uh, something to the effect that, I said, well, why don't you just bleep it? You know, the parts you don't like. That's not what this company is all about. We pride ourselves in never bleeping. And they, they haven't, they, they don't bleep you at all. And they pride themselves in that. And he said, that's not what we're all about. And then he screamed at me, what do you want? Don't yell at me. What do you want me to do? Call the company. And I said, what's the number? And he hung up on me. Mm. So what I'd like to well, know, are you allowed, when you put the info on your website, can you somehow get get it out there to people like me that can't hear you anymore, who we can call, who we can write to, because this, this guy on the radio doesn't matter. He doesn't know anything. No, he know? doesn't know anything. And uh, the guy who uh, runs the company is Fareed Suleiman. Fareed still parks in this building, as a matter of fact. Is that right? If I see him, I'll, I'll absolutely have to say something to him. I wish um, you would discuss it with him, Howard. Yeah, it's silly for us to be off the air, but that's the way he wants to play it. Um, he, it he's using the excuse that I promote Sirius too much, and the fact of the matter is I don't, and, and the fact of the matter is everything I've ever done 
I've talked about on the air. Well, he knows that. Why can't you ask them, why are they saying one week for this one week? Why are they doing that? And why are they allowed to run your commercials? You know, your, some of your live commercials that, that you do? But they're because they're doing whatever they want to do. They're not allowed to even chop my show up. They're not allowed to uh, so sit I there and... Can you sue them or something? Yeah, of course. I'm going to have to. It sounds to me like they're not going to pay their bill. But Fareed's attitude is, uh, I'm Fareed. I am above the law. I yes. am the man who can make the rules for everyone. Well, that's an outright lie to us telling us to listen for a week just for one week. Well, We're not going to have them on. I mean, there's I don't know. I don't. You know what? I'm going to tell you what, Sharon. I don't know what's going on. If this is supposed to punish me, it doesn't feel much like a punishment. It doesn't really bother me. It bothers me that the listeners are being punished. I think it's a silly move for their radio station. Uh, I don't think they're real. this is a battle he needs to fight. I, I'm not sure why there's a battle. I'm leaving in a, in a year. We have a good year left. It's a hit show. Let the show air. Or if you don't want the show to air, announce to the audience that you don't. You want to make a change in direction. You want to go a different way. Pay your bill to me and go put on a different show. It's as simple as that. But all these vicious statements on the air and running uh, spots that say that I'm a bad person and that I promote the serious too much. Listen. And nothing in my contract says I can't talk about what's going on in my life or my business or anything like that. I've always promoted movies and books and everything else. I was just wondering if you could get the word out to people like me, like I said. To, that Listen, when I was shooting my movie, it was interesting to get on the air and tell you what was going on. If I didn't, people would have said, well, the show's not good anymore. You don't tell us what's going on. Uh, here, this is one of the biggest stories in broadcasting, that I'm making this move, that I'm walking away from conventional radio. And, of course, I was going to talk about it. And I even discussed it with people here. And I said, don't you think that this will bring us a lot of ratings? And sure enough, I was right. It uh, brought a huge amount of ratings. We're, we're number one on every market this past month because people are tuning in to hear what's going on. So, uh, you know, listen, Fareed's accusing me of things that just aren't true. I don't even know why the guy took this on as a battle. It's not a battle. If you decide to go in a different direction, that's fine with me. If you feel that I'm leaving in a year hurts you in some way. But this is just childish. And and what you're saying to your audience every week is, I mean, I mean, look, you could see how there's such folly involved. They started taking me off at 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, why would I care if they took me off at 10 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, then they started, then they, they dropped that. Then they dropped that. Then they started wow. sending me letters saying I owed them money for mentioning Sirius. And I said, I'm not going to pay it. And if anything, you guys owe me money. I'm, you know, you have to pay your contract. Then they said, uh, they don't get in touch with me. They just pull the show up during Best Of. Then they've taken it off the air this week. And I'm like, well, well, who are you punishing? You're not punishing me. I'm I'm leaving in a year. They're saying they're taking it off for this week, but, but yet they're not talking with you? No, no they, don't, they, don't, they don't even discuss this with us. We read about it in a magazine, and I started laughing. My agent called me. He goes, did you read this? They had taken you off the air. I said, I said well, who are they punishing? Why, why, why is this Fareed's battle? I know Fareed for years. Won't he sit down and talk with you? You know, I don't need to talk. I have a contract. Either run the show or don't. Pay your yeah. bill if you have to, and that's the end. There's nothing to talk about. What is there to talk about? You know, to ask him, you know, what's going on? What's, what's changed that hasn't always, you know, it's always been the same. What's, what's with right now? And, you know? and let your audience hear the show for a year or don't, but just tell them the truth. It's going to be a long year. It's a parent effing with the kids in a divorce. In other words, it's the thing you're not supposed to do to your audience. You're supposed to treat them like, you know, they're God. And uh, what you do is you say, okay, look, we've come to a corporate decision. Here's the decision. We're done. Listen, if I own Citadel Broadcasting and my, and my CEO is running around every week making a different decision, I'd say, well, why don't you have some clarity? Sit down and think before you act. Not me. I am running around like chicken with head cut off. Who needs thinking? <laughs> I don't see how you thinking keep... is for losers. Thinking schminking. I don't see how you keep your sanity dealing with all this behind-the-scenes stuff that you can't even tell us, you know. I got to tell you something. It's fascinating stuff. Um, in fact, um, I'm sitting here, you know, I, I guess I purposely haven't played these tapes. I was discussed uh, for the last two weeks in every year in review. Yeah. And they're, they're interesting tapes if you're a fan of the show. Uh, but I don't want to be accused of, you know, I've always you're played. You're holding them back from me. I am because I'm saying, well, it, well I, I keep, now I'm questioning myself. Well, am I promoting Sirius by playing these tapes or am I? I mean, every television station is running discussions about me. I've well, always aired this stuff. It's like we're the only people who can't right. talk about it. I know. I don't know. I just wanted to let you know that I got through to him, and that's pretty much what he said to me. And All I, right. I just wanted to know if there was a way you could get word to people like me through the Internet, you know, through your website. 
that people like us could bombard that company. I'm not interested in enforcing anybody to do anything. I, know, I mean, I'm really not. I mean, I know, it's up to I'm them. Up, I'm up in arms about it. Yeah, you know? but I'm not going to sit here and beg to be on the air. I don't care. I don't I care know. who they put on. I don't care what they do. I just think it's a dumb move the way they're handling it, and that's the end of it. Um, if this is the way you want to be all childish and, you know, start sending me bills and do whatever you want, dude. But it's just not I'm, – I'm being honest. It, I don't care. Yeah. It's it's not working. Go to war with someone else. It's it's just not working. Yeah. I, I wish there was a way you could just jump ship right now today. Yeah, well. I really do because it's going to be a long time, you know. Yeah. I just wanted to call you back and tell you what I found out. All right. Well, All right. if anything, Fareed's helping me because people like you now are, like, ready to go buy radios. So. Oh, yeah. And when he, he accused me, he said, when he said about how you're real slick at what you do, you know, and I said, that was already a done deal in my head. He, he said, see, you know, and it's like, excuse me. I'm slick at what I do. Maybe I'm good at what you I know? do. People enjoy listening yeah, to Yeah, and maybe they just want to keep listening. Well, he said it in a way like, yeah, you're all, awesome. yeah, you're one of those, you know. And he won't even play it on the, the radio, of course. What I well, unfortunately, about. you're you're talking to the local disc jockey there. You're not talking to Fareed. You yeah. talk, you know, and talking to the local disc jockey ain't going to do you any good. Well, that's what I mean. I did it once, and it's like right. I got my, you know, I, I accused him of dangling into the show for a week. And I said, you guys have no intention of bringing him back on. We don't know. We don't know. Well, the only person they've upset is you. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? And, and listeners like you. All right. Hey, thanks. I got to go. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Later. Bye. Scott, you're on the air. Hey. What's up, Howard? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy Jew Year, actually, to you. Happy Jew Year. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, what they call the big that big tidal wave that hit Israel. What do they call the big uh, tidal wave that hit Israel? You know, they had the one in, just recently. Yes, yes. Go on. The tsunami. It's what? Tsunami. Tsunami. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. You've written a joke. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. What do I get for it? A penny? Yes, a penny, because it's a Jew joke, and Jews are cheap. Scott has sort of a theme yeah. to his joke. Junami. There you go. Happy Jew year, Junami. Yeah, that's Tsunami. Boy, that's bringing out the worst in people. Yeah, Scott's an example of it. Yeah. Well, no, I, I mean, <laughs> all those rich people laying on the beach the day after the Tsunami are the best. Yeah. They should be given an award. Hey, what's with the service here? It sucks. Well, we just had a, a huge human disaster. Yeah, uh, we're trying to get the bodies off the beach. Right. Yeah, but, hey, I paid for my vacation. <laughs> we were hit with the worst disaster in the history of the world. No. Yeah. Which they're calling it. Well, did you see in the paper today they're saying that people are looting the dead bodies? Yeah, they're going around, these guys. This is why that part of the world, I mean, the idea of going on vacation in Thailand. You would. I never be in a tsunami because I'm never going to be in Thailand ever. You were acting like this wouldn't happen if there was a tsunami where you go. Oh, if there was a tsunami where I go, I'd be dead. <laughs> but you'd be having your fingers cut off. Yeah, too. they're going. Or they're going around, like some of these people, and they uh, when they find the you know they go, they go and they rob the corpses and they hold them for ransom for the families. And well, also, they're cutting the jewelry right off their fingers. That's what they're holding for ransom. They cut the jewelry off. Yeah. They take the fingers and whatever else, you know, they, you know, earlobes, whatever they can find jewelry on. Yeah. And then they either keep it, sell it, or hold it for ransom for the families. Yeah, and like, and like, I guess the family goes, hey, you know, my dad's ear is missing. I want it back. Right. But I'm like, you know, I would bury my dad without his ear. I just yeah, wouldn't I wouldn't it. go for this ransom thing. But the then it's creepy thing than thinking, gee, my dad's ear is in the possession of somebody else. Right. The other thing they're doing is they're finding the luggage and, you know, the belongings from, you know, because that gets all washed out, too. Right. So they're going through all of that and probably finding, you know, stuff. Yeah. And then in Sweden, they say, people are finding out the addresses of people who've been lost over there. And they're looting their, you know, robbing their homes in mm, Sweden. Oh, man. What about uh, these kids who are orphaned over there and oh. people are coming in and buying the kids for 50 bucks and putting yeah. them into slavery yeah oh. some young boys oh god can you imagine hmm. well i also i'm pretty heard... sure that's how i ended up with my family <laughs> <laughs> i also heard that al-qaeda uses this time to recruit new members because yeah. um they get the orphans and they sort of plant anti-american thoughts right they brainwash them. yeah yeah we're over there giving them all this money and then al-qaeda didn't give them a dime yeah. And then they somehow get the recruits, and we don't. Yeah, they say, well, America took too much time to help you. We'll help you. And yeah, they, sure. They're evil. Because, you know, Indonesia has the largest Muslim population, I think. Oh, great. Yeah, oh, that's good news. Absolutely. There's, there, I heard al-Qaeda is uh, 
springing into action. That's right. We got to quickly get over there and rebuild their country. Give them porn shops and porno, porno and scores. strippers. Scores. Yeah. Scores Thailand. That sounds good. Did you get over to Scores during the vacation? I was there. No, I, 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 I didn't get over. I went over with Ronnie one night mm. and a couple other people. We had a good time. Damn, I got to get over there. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so. Don't distract me with that. <laughs> Sorry for the detour. Let's see. It's this Star Jones runs from tsunami. That's <laughs> <laughs> God blessing her. <laughs> There she goes. Oh, Eric. Yes, how are you? How are you doing? I'm sorry. I was uh, busy on the other line. Uh, thanks for getting back with me. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I got a hold of you. Um, basically, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, films. We're one of the largest producers and distributors in the, uh, the adult film industry. Right. I, I, had, I did two porn stars already. Yeah. Oh, great. I did, I did Dynamite and Alexandria Quinn. Uh-huh. And Cleopatra. Well, anyway, she, she mentioned to me that she would be interested in possibly doing uh, a shoot with you. And, you know, there'll be some good money to be made. And aside from that, I mean, this girl, she's absolutely beautiful, you know? Right. I mean, obviously, I mean, she wants to do it for the exposure and so forth. But, she, I mean, she mentioned to me also, you know, she, she thought you were cute and all. So, but I don't, I don't know if, if this is something that you think you might be interested in uh, at all. Hey, I, I mean, look, I mean, I did it with two porn stars, and, you know, so far I'm getting the hang of it, but, you know, I'm still nervous, but look, I'll still do it. Uh-huh. So how do you feel about uh, doing, a, you know, a scene with two more people? Uh, so there'd be four of you all together. For me, me and, like, two other people? It, it, it would be you, Barbie, Bruce, and Kevin. And what does uh, Bruce or Kevin do? Well, I don't know. Would it, would it be okay if a, if a guy shot a in your face? <laughs> a guy? Uh, or even even if, the, if the price was right, if both actors uh, shot their <laughs> in your face. Well, I mean, I never had that done before. Well, I, I, I'm just thinking, you know, like maybe the, this male bonding, you know, could help you achieve a proper <laughs> so that you can perform under pressure for Barbie. I mean, I know that... Uh, I'll tell you what, for an extra $10,000, would you do an intrusion scene with Bruce Lloyd. I know it is. I mean, I told Howard a few, like a few days ago that if he... Eric, 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 let, let me just put it this way. I mean, would you describe your as a point of occasional entry? Uh... I might, yeah. Okay. Hmm. I mean, you know, gerbils and things like that. Because right. really, we've got a, a big budget. Right. We've got a fat wallet. We'll call the movie uh, High Pitch Eric's Coming Out Movie. How does that sound? Hey, that sounds, that sounds good. There you go. Now, do you know Alexandria Quinn? Yeah, oh, yeah, I've, I've heard of her. Okay, well, they know. Howard, Howard knows that uh, he asked me if I had a girl to myself, <laughs> would I be able to get it? And I said, yes, I would, because it did happen before. Well, if you saw this girl, I mean, and, and Bruce Lloyd as well, he's got a unit like you wouldn't believe. Oh, really? Yeah, I can tell you're drooling over there. I am. <laughs> well, great. L listen, um, I'm going to get a hold of Barbie Brooks, and we'll see if we can do this. Okay, and when, when, when would you like to do this? Well, I was thinking, uh, i tell you what, I think that's probably Bruce Lloyd trying to get, get a hold of me. He's called me five times, so he's... Yeah, he's okay. got a thing for you, so. Okay. I'll, let me call you right back. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I bet just happy to hear anybody to has a thing for it. Yeah. I didn't hear any no's in that. No, not, a, not at all. Hey, Andrew, you're on the air. Hi, Mommy. Albert. Yeah. yeah. Hey, now. What's going on, Artie? What's up, man? Hey, now. So, listen, I'm on vacation. I'm a college student. I'm on vacation. And who should I stay on the beach? I see Pamela Anderson, Stephen Dorff. Yeah, she's doing him now. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, no. The worst part is, though, it's like I walk up, and his head is literally kissing her ass. I know. They were making out all over the beaches. Where was that? Hawaii? Cabo oh. San Lucas. Oh, Cabo yeah, San Lucas. Mexico. Yeah, there Cabo was pictures. Cabo San Lucas, in, the saw, in Mexico, right saw, into Tijuana. I saw the pictures in the paper, and uh, they were, like, making out in, in all kinds of public displays of affection. And oh, it was disgusting. It, 
I mean, it, it was terrible because she is so hot. And I mean, know. Such a step down. <laughs> yeah, every, but you ever notice every guy she's with we think is a step down? Yeah, well, who is the step up? Us. Well, I know, wait, the list. <laughs> All of us. So right. I asked her about the scores thing. Yeah. And we're going through the whole thing. And she tells me that she was with Ralph. And the whole time, I'm just thinking, why are you with such... Why Ralph? Yeah, well, Ralph didn't get her. Just, you know, Ralph was trying, but he didn't get anything. Else. And she was with this, this bad assistant, and like, but she is gorgeous. I know. This tiny bikini. Yeah. She knows what she's got. It's amazing. Oh, she knows how to use it all right. And then she wears that belly chain with the bikini. Belly chain with the, and the thing is, I had to do the double glance to see the Barbara tattoo. That was the kicker. Well, oh, she, she was wearing that when I was uh, in that hotel room with her. Oh, yeah, she had that green thing, that green little thing. That yeah. was me. It was hot. I know. And she's like, a, and she's, and she acts like a little whore. Yeah, no, she completely knows it too, with the tattoos on her back as well. Yeah, I bet you she really knows how to do it. She, you think she gives? Oh, I think she gives and receives. <laughs> oh yeah. They oh, walked, so as soon as I walked away, they both just got up and went right back into their little hotel room. I can't even figure out how this guy. Stephen He's Dorf. another guy. Yeah. Where is he working? Who, who is Stephen Dorf? I met him one night at Rick oh. Rubin's house at a party. And, he was one of those dudes sitting there on his Blackberry the whole time. And then when I'm leaving, he goes, oh, hey, man, uh, I'm a real fan. And I was like, well, why don't you, instead of typing on your Blackberry the whole night, why don't you say hello? Yeah. What you got to be a dick for? But, uh, and he goes, what's a dick for? <laughs> anyway, so uh, I go, well, if you don't know, then you're gay. <laughs> well, I think his then, name uh, the same was that Jennifer Lopez movie. So. Yeah, now you seem like an okay guy when I met him, but I mean, she should be with me. <laughs> she should be. All right. Gonna ask you. Her. Me or she you? She should be sitting and waiting. She should be with either me or you. Right. Me. Yeah. yeah. And if she can't get the two of you, she should be at out. home alone. She should be with winners like she us. Not with me or you, Howard. She should be with nobody, and that's the rule. Yeah. That's, that's a good move go. for Stephen Dorff, because whoever thinks about Stephen Dorff. Yeah, he's well, getting his name in the paper. If I was well, Josh he... Brolin, I'd go with Pam Anderson. <laughs> Maybe I, be with Al Reynolds. If you were Josh yeah. Brolin, you'd go push me. <laughs> yeah. Al Reynolds. If I was Josh Brolin, I'd rather live with her and push her around. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Wait, Howard. Yeah. Do you have any prizes for me? I'm a college student. I don't it even gets, have a it thing. It's expensive. It's after Christmas. I don't have nothing. Anything on high, anything. Sorry, bro. I don't you have me a, a, Can you sign something for me? You're yeah, hanging have... with Pam Anderson in Cabo San Lucas. You're doing it right for you. Yeah, you're doing just fine. <laughs> go hit up your parents for a prize. Hey, tonight on E, it's the show everyone's been waiting for, the intern beauty pageant. Talking hey about now. hot chicks. These interns are something else. Check them out. I mean it. Hot interns. They're God damn it. Real spitfires. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see this memo we got from Viacom? No, yeah. what's that? See, I, didn't, I don't think I got this, but I might have been thrown it out. I always throw it out. It was laying on our desks when we got in yesterday. Really? I didn't see it. It's 56 pages of <gasps> memo. Of, like, what you can say on the radio and what you can't. And really, I'm the only guy who should really be reading it, if you think about it. Why is that? Because I'm the one who's always in trouble. I mean, Oh, we've gotten you into trouble before. You always get the blame. But, yeah. you know, they'll say, the lady said. <laughs> General policy. <laughs> and under, then the other one said. You have to hire a lawyer, and they want you to sign it to so that you understand it. Right. So it's like under, oh, I never do that. Under 18 USC, and there's a weird symbol, 1464. I don't even know what that symbol is. What does is. that mean? A provision of the Federal Criminal Code. It is a federal offense to broadcast obscene material at any hour of the day or to broadcast indecent or profane material outside certain defined late-night hours. I mean, you would... Are we going to get arrested? Well, they keep trying to get us to sign this, so that way if we get fined again, it's not their fault. I haven't signed it in 20 years. I'm never going to I'm not signing it. I think I did the wrong thing because signing it is way different than throwing it out. <laughs> and this is a section. I threw it out. The FCC has defined indecency as language or material and context depicts or describes in terms patently offensive as measured by contemporary community standards. You know, all that crap. And then it says uh, something about like... Uh, oh, my God. It's 50. Innuendo, double entendre. What? I think that, that one right there on the bottom, the next one on the bottom is the weird one. And here's one that says, if you say hell, right, go to it. hell. FCC has recently defined profanity in as many as six different ways. Blasphemy, divine imprecation, what? imprecation cursing, e.g., go to hell, god damn you. Oh, my. Personally reviling epithets, naturally tending to provoke violent resentment. That's anything. 
I need specific examples like the the uh, one they just did. Well, I got that right here. Grossly offensive language that amounts to a nuisance, with nuisance nuisance defined to be language that is prejudicial to the sense of decency or morals of the citizens at large. Uh, so if you say go to hell, I guess you could get thrown off too. That means that you that means I'll, saying it. I'll get, yeah, I don't care. So <laughs> I, I, I would I would so love to be thrown off the air for saying go to hell. I mean, <laughs> you know. Didn't the vice president tell somebody to go f themselves? Yeah, no, that was fine. Yeah, but he wasn't on a radio. I guess. No, he was live on TV on C-SPAN. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> Howard, I have that quiz. Did that he get fined? Oh, so then listen to this. Now the company is email. See, you don't check your email. They're emailing us. I do check my email. I just emptied my box yesterday. What about your box? <laughs> Isn't that double entendre? <laughs> um, so in the email now, now I didn't hey get now. one of these yet, but Scott the engineer got one. It's a quiz you have to take, and it is the most condescending quiz you could ever get. What is the quiz? It's like, it's, it's like you have to respond to this email as an employee of this company, and it's a quiz that says, like, okay, if you see a woman... Would you walk up to her and say, hey, you have a nice ass, A, or B, not comment? And, and then you go. Just look real hard. Right, right. And, I mean, you know, you know the answer is not A. Right. You know, you know it's like. It's you know, pretty obvious what the well, answer yeah, would is. You, would you stare ass. at her ass to make her uncomfortable, or would you just ignore her ass? Here's one I, here's one I remember. So, so, wait a second. So, you know, of course the answer is I would ignore her ass. Even if you're not, even though you know you're going to stare at her right, ass. Right, you can't say you're going to stare at her ass. Yeah, what I would do is put on my sunglasses so she couldn't see me staring at her ass. Can you write in your ass? Well, if you write that and, and then you put down the wrong answer, <laughs> they send it back to you and go, listen, you answered wrong. Oh. Don't you think you shouldn't stare at her ass? Are you kidding? You're now in a correspondence. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wrote in, slap that ass with a ping pong paddle. <laughs> I was going to say, there's tapes of us every day on the air doing the wrong thing. Right. Well, so, see, the quiz you're talking about, that's the one we had to take in May. Right. That was the one about how to act in the office. Right. This one I got here is how to act on the air. Yeah, right. So you want to give you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. The host of a popular talk show was discussing, in indirect, oblique terms, a particular sexual practice involving defecation. Okay. In the background, there are sound effects of flatulence and heavy breathing. All right. True or false? These background sound effects have no bearing on the FCC's indecency al analysis, which is focused only on the words uttered or the images depicted. So true or false? True. False. False. The FCC may well examine the entire context uh. of the material, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it seems like I need some sensitivity training. You're going to get a letter back saying, don't you think? Fred, give us an example of those sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? This is so dumb. It is dumb. I'm just telling you what they've been saying. It's farting. <laughs> oh, this is a great. It may not even be. Wait, we're giving you an example of what we're not supposed to do. Okay. This is like if you were tarted. <laughs> right. But I mean, you know, it's so obvious what the answer. Yeah. yeah. D during a football game broadcast on your TV station, a woman is caught on camera dancing topless in the stands. Okay. The director immediately cuts away to a different camera, and the image is broadcast only for a second or two. Okay. Get a nigga, get a table dance. <laughs> <laughs> a or B are your choices. All right. A. The brief or fleeting nature of this exposure provides a sufficient defense, and the FCC will not find this broadcast indecent under its rules. Or B, the brief or fleeting nature of an incident such as this does not always provide a valid defense, and the FCC might still find the broadcast indecent. Well, we know uh, it's B course, because yeah. of Janet Jackson. Right. But, so what am I supposed to do, answer this? You have to answer B. If you answer A, they come back and they ask you to rethink it. <laughs> How about C? I pull down my pants All and right. pleasure myself. How about yeah. this? <laughs> After you rethink it, you say, I still think it's A. <laughs> yeah. I, re I thought about it for a week. What we what we did was we took Scott's and we mailed it back with all the wrong answers, and now they're like <laughs> they keep arguing with us. Oh, See, I got one here that that it's gives so you funny. it gives you three choices. Yeah. But I don't know if I could do this on the air. It says which of the following statements, if aired, would likely by itself expose a broadcast station to the risk of an FCC indecency forfeiture. Right. Please consider all options before answering. Go ahead. But I don't know if they can read these now because let, let me see them. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll decide because I seem to know the rules. <laughs> You yeah. passed this. Oh, yeah, you can't oh boy, no, you can't go there. Let's see. I'm going to come over to your house, bash your brains in with an axe handle, and <laughs> set your kids on fire. That you can say. That I know you can say. Yeah, that's okay. I walked into my boss's office, dropped trowel, 
and laid a You're... big steaming pile of blank <laughs> on his desk. And then I walked out. Yeah, I don't think you could say so that. It's B. I think it's all of them, Howard. I think no. no I B think you can let's say. see. Only a, a is only one. B is only three. C is both one and two. D both two and three. <laughs> both one and three. What? F. Each of these statements is potentially indecent. I say yeah. F. Yeah, I, you know I'm, I'm no. thinking about it. Answer one and three. Really? You can say I'm going to go over to your house and bash your brains in with an axe handle. Right. And set your kids on fire. That's what we said. <laughs> see, we know the rules. And set your kids on fire. Yeah. How could I complain to the FCC? I got a, an offensive email, which that is, right. which I was highly upset about. Right. Why should I have to be put up from this company with that kind of abuse? Well, I think you have a case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to represent him? Yeah. Oh, no. I'll represent you. Thank you. <laughs> right, how, here's one. This is one that I really don't know the answer to. Okay, you have a live broadcast on your interviewing Bjorn. He's a Swedish tennis star. Go ahead. You ask him about a former relationship with a famous model. Okay. And he lapses into his native tongue momentarily. Go ahead. You don't speak a word of Swedish, but notice that his, uh, the star's bilingual publicist, publicist blushes to his responses. Yeah. Later you learn that the, star comment, the star's comments included some very explicit sexual terms. Hmm. Will this be problematic if someone complains? Now, the answer is... If, if they, of course, if they, if they complain. If they do sexual talk in Swedish? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, or no. If someone complains. Well, wait a second. Well, yes, yeah. the fact that sexually explicit comments are uttered in a foreign language is not necessarily a defense. That's Tom, a we can't broadcast dirty in Swedish? I would like to say the reason what Scott said before is the reason why nobody likes him. But he's right. right. Why are you sending those things in the email with it's dirty comments in them? It's educational. It's an no. educational process. No, it defends him. He was offended. Him. It offends him. <laughs> it offends him. <laughs> and he has a huge lawsuit pending against I you. I think he's... you need some sensitivity training. Yeah. On a personal basis. You better get an offshore account somewhere, dude. <laughs> We're coming after you. <laughs> it's so funny. Did you get so? Are you behind this mailing? Who mailed that? I'm not behind it, but I mean, I have you I got taken it. this quiz? Oh, you got the quiz too? Oh, sure. Did you fill it out? Yes, I did. Yeah, you're the only one that's gonna. I got a hundred. <laughs> Gary, book that Swedish guy. Hey, here's, good guy. Wait, here's, here's one that I really don't Bjorn. know. Bjorn. <laughs> Great. Yeah, where do we get Bjorn? Uh, What's the maximum forfeiture the FCC can impose on a station per day and per year for indecency violations? I is don't it, know per year. Is it thirty-two thousand five hundred per day, three hundred twenty-five thousand a year? Is it 275000 a day, $1.5 million a year? Are there no daily caps at a $10 million per year cap? Or is no it, daily caps. Or is there no per day or per year cap? No per day or per year cap. That is correct. Right. I know my stuff. Give me that well, quiz. Well, what's the individual? Is 27? I think we did. You know, I said you wouldn't take it. What's the individual fine? 27 five for each one, but you could rack up $20, 20 million, million in one day. Yeah. Especially if you do a five-hour show. That's why I'm getting off the air at 10. It's getting too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> How about our buddy Fareed going to war with me, huh? Throw me off. He's putting me on. What's his... Yeah! I'm not sure. Are not you sure aware of this kind of volatility in his decision Yes. Making? Tom knows all about Fareed. <laughs> He's wacky. Uh, I, I, you know, I've worked with Fareed here a long time. I actually got, li got like Fareed, got along with Fareed. I did, too, I thought. But he did. He do crazy things like, uh, take him off, put him back, take him off, he made, put him he, back. He did a couple of wild things. Not in front of me, though. <laughs> Didn't do any wild things in front of me. I used to just see him in there licking Mel's butt all the time. <laughs> Mel, the stock, Mel, the stock has gone up. You see? I told you. <laughs> Bringing in his laptop every minute, remember? I never saw any. No, I didn't see that. Jumping up and down. Unbelievable. Now he's running Citadel. He's controlling all he's of Providence. He's still jumping up and down. Look at me. I am jumping up and down. <laughs> I'm a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> He's a character, huh? I'm a maniac, maniac. Look, I am levitating. Fareed, why are you jumping up and down? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I work for my new office at Citadel. It's the Taj Mahal of office. <laughs> Did you know he once sent me a check for a million bucks? Not until you I'm, told that story. I'm no. talking about, like, early on, out of the blue, the dude sends me a check for a million bucks. Did he, did he thank you when you returned it? Yeah, oh, profusely. Oh, okay. If Mel had found out, he would have been done. 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 I, his career would have been over. And Don called me up because you believe this guy? He goes, and you know the way they do their accounting over there. They're never going to know the difference. And if they did catch it, we could have gone, hey, we didn't We didn't catch it. But well, you would have had to return, right. You would have right. had to return the money. Right, but fine. You would have had the money. But it was worth the shot, the right? Period. Yeah. But what no, if, I, I, listen, I get, Tom, I guarantee right you, you did the oh, right I know thing I as you did. would always do. I called Fareed. Well, Don called Fareed and said, listen. We're giving you back this money. No need to tell Mel about it. 
And he was like, thank you, thank you, praise Ganesh. <laughs> what is that, that elephant he praised? Uh, I've never Ganesha. known him to sound like that, by the praise way. Praise Ganesh. Praise Dumbo. <laughs> it's not that far Praise right. Dumbo. <laughs> El Dumbo. So I was, like, I was like, you know, hey, this dude owes me one. I figure he'd be the last guy that's going to sit there and, you know, dick with me, but... What are you gonna do, man? Nobody, yeah. nobody. You know, everyone has those short memories. You said some fairly uncomplimentary things about him at one yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I I'm think, not even done. But well, I think I'm, I'm saying when, well, when he was still here, yes. yeah. you you were fairly uncomplimentary yeah. towards him. Well, for yeah, fairly, there were reasons. Period. I don't well, think he left here loving you. No, no. no why? He no, hired me no, over no, at Citadel. No, no. I know, but that might have been a business decision. I, I do know that there was some bad blood. Yeah, but I talked to him about it. We we oh, made up. Yeah, I said, listen, you know. I don't think he left here loving me. I know that. Yeah. I but well, your mustache looks ridiculous. I never met the guy. But I know now he's like trying to be like Mel and fight, you know. And it's like, it's like, why is there a fight? What? Do you understand why there's a fight? Well, uh, listen, we're we're taking a different tack. So obviously, yeah. I, I don't agree. I don't understand what they're doing. I don't agree with that. With what? They're I mean, doing. I think it's cool to fire me if you feel you want to go in another direction. But be a man about it, like Mel was, and he fired lots of people and said, "Okay, I have you under contract. I'll pay out your contract. I don't want you, you know." Uh, Are those about to rock fire? Yeah, but, I mean, but like all this this weird stuff, pulling me off the air, putting me back on the air. You, Howard, don't you think that with that whole thing that went on with Opie and Anthony, if Mel could have figured out a way not to pay him? Of course. You know what I'm you, yeah, you, and you, he probably could have made a real good argument not to pay them, but he was a stand-up guy. He says, okay, I'll pay you. I mean, you know, I mean, certainly, you know, going in and, and having sex on a church, you could probably make a good argument that they right. violated every rule on the planet. And, and you've you certainly know, done less than that. Yeah. It, it, yeah, I mean, you know, all right, so he fired me, probably could have been, but he said, oh, listen, I have a contract with you here. Here's your money. Okay, good. That's Mel's way. He's an honest guy. I just think this is so much angling not to pay me. You know, that's what I, I think. I don't know, but I, again, I, I, I don't know. It's my guess. Is this what you guys are going to do to me, like, in March? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you taking notes? <laughs> yeah, take notes. No. You want to see? I'm growing out my eyebrows so I look like Mel. <laughs> you know, Howard, I got a question for you. Yeah. I got a question for you. Somebody, one, one of my publicists I was talking to yesterday, and they said to me, I want to fly in in December. I'd love to be there for the final show. And I said, I'm not positive there'll be a final show in December. Do you think there will be a final show in December? Unfortun unfortunately not. I don't think so. And it's a shame because, dude... We could have a blowout. Yeah, because it could only get more exciting. World tour. I'm still tour listen, I'm December. still optimistic. There's gonna be that show on whatever it would be December, eighteenth, twentieth, eighteenth, whatever it would be. Uh -huh. And uh, and I'm I'm listen. I'm hopeful that we're gonna go to Vegas. I know that. Uh, I don't think we are. Well, but why not? Because there's a whole bunch of shenanigans going but, on. But but if we can all make money. Yeah, but how do you how do you do that with the same time you're getting dicked with? You know what I'm saying? Because business is business. I don't see it that way. You know, if if you, on the one hand you're getting barraged with legal letters and Steve Lehrman stuff, and then everyone's saying to me, "Hey, help us make a bunch of money," I'm like, "Why?" We're I mean, if, if you help, you're trying to make me lose money on the other end. We're trying, we're, but we're trying to help each other make money. Yeah, but but, but in other words, if somebody's clobbering in the like, if if you're Diane Lane. All right. I agree by it because she is so, so hot. So hot. Did you, ever, did you ever see Walk I mean, on the Moon? It, yeah. Yeah, Walk oh, on the Moon, yeah. Ufa. I've walked on the moon. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> with God. Her. With her. <laughs> In my dreams. Oh. Yeah, oh, that guy's got no class. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Shoving her. What is he shoving her? I treat her like a goddess. Oh, she's so beautiful. Yeah. Diane Link, classy. <laughs> she's put her in a pair of heels, take her out for the night. Come on. Spin her you know, around. That guy, you, man. <laughs> he's got trouble with this kid. What's that? Josh Brolin. What's that Richard Gere movie she's in? The You know, the one that she just Unfaithful. did? Unfaithful. Unfaithful. There's a scene in Unfaithful oh. where she's just yeah. doing herself. Yeah. Ugh, that's amazing. Oh, she loves to take her clothes off in the movies, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Come on. And so, you know what? There's she probably... So Josh Brolin gets turned down for some crappy television show. <laughs> and uh, he's all upset about it because Barbra Streisand's having a great career. His dad's doing good. Yeah, Barbara's turning down music. She doesn't uh, uh, work. She doesn't want to work anymore. Yeah, yeah, Josh Brolin's sitting at the table. Uh, Barbara, what did you turn down today? Uh, oh, I turned down 20 movies. <laughs> and I won't tour. I refuse to tour. They want me to tour. I won't tour. Diane, what's going on with you? I'm only going to do 10 movies this year. That's it. I've got I to get some rest. Uh, oh, and Josh, what's going on with you? I can't get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I have an audition for oh, CSI. Push thought... me. So then they go home, and Diane says to him, Diane Lane says to him, Honey, 
I am so upset that they rejected you for that Flipper remake. <laughs> <laughs> Working with a dolphin would have been your would have been you so been you would have been brilliant. Dad to that kid with and the And then dolphin. he goes, "Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! You know what it's like to be rejected." I'm going to work with a dolphin. They don't even want me for that. <laughs> Get over here. I'm going to push you. <laughs> I, lost the, around. I, I lost an audition for CSI Milwaukee. She needs a guy who... <laughs> she needs a guy who... Like me, if I may say so, who... Has you know, a job. Has a job. Is very secure. I'm very... I, my plate is full. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to resent her who's career. Got, who's got time to push her? I mean, I'd be like, how many movies are you doing this year, honey? Ten? Good. I'll push you. I love you. You're, you're making like, money. You're a stud if that's the case. You a know hot what? chick who makes money. You make me so happy, I'm going to go do the shows from Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care. I don't care about Steve Lehrman. You stay busy, I'll stay busy. Yeah. Every time we meet, it'll be a honeymoon. Let's go to Vegas. I'll do the show. You'll come. Here. You'll take a break from your my, from your movie. You know, I'm not looking to do flipper movies. Yeah. <laughs> Get the room at the bowling alley. Right. The whole deal. I'm gonna, the I'm Hard Rock gonna... Hotel, man. Yeah. And casino. So. Yeah. I don't know. I can't even get a commercial. <laughs> I'm going to have to push you around. I, I don't, Gilbert Gottfried beat me out as a cartoon voice. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to December 18th. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm right. hoping... You're, you're saying, hey, let's go... I, I, yeah, that's why I don't get for read, but you know what? That's cool. I mean, I really am not that bothered by it. I'm just surprised. Well, you can be surprised all you want. <laughs> Surprise! You are at war with me. Hey, when are you rescheduling the Christmas party? I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah, what happened with that? I know there's going to be none. Uh, time slides and throwing the Christmas right. party. Well, actually, actually, we were talking about that No, it's about still in December. Yesterday. Yeah, it's next it's December. No, it's December 20th. Uh, no, it, it's, it's uh, <laughs> Easter. Hey, if I had that mustache, I would be making jokes about people, all right, Artie? If I looked like you, I'd be very quiet at the moment. No, that's not nice. <laughs> well, I, well, don't attack my person. <laughs> oh, whoa, well, like you don't attack me. Oh, come on. What am I attacking? Yeah, yeah. Tom's mad yeah, because stand I'm, up so I can have a good Tom's laugh. Tom's mad because I'm doing the dead on freedom impression. All right, now stand up so I can have a good laugh. <laughs> yes. I love this music. <laughs> good, stuff. good stuff. This is our new format. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, there should be a, a memo coming soon. Really? About the rescheduled holiday party. Count me in. Are you going to do it classy or are you going to do a junky party like We're not going to do it the way do. you described the last time we was in here. God damn, you put on the worst party last Thanks. time. It's Christmas in <laughs> June. <laughs> the, the assortment of fried foods was frightening. Uh, I didn't we, know what, you know to, what? I didn't know what are, to choose. What, what did we had you to, eat first? We specifically had food selected just for you. And in fact, not mm, by you, but by your... Your aide de camp. Wouldn't it be nice though to <laughs> so do a sit down dinner? Ah, <sighs> oh, come on, man! No, It'd be I so disagree. classy. We used to do that. That was so great. Stand, hang around, drink, get loose, mm. go to scores after. Who knows? Maybe a card game breaks out. Card game. A wild card game. <laughs> card game and scores. I don't know, man. It seemed like it was one step up from a tailgate party. <laughs> you see those guys tailgating? They're having a good time. Yeah. Well, tailgating has its place. Right. <laughs> yeah, just there's no game to go to after Tom's no. party. Let's do a classy sit down dinner. Everybody bring their chick. Be hot. Just once, Tom. Just once. Let's I, go crazy. Loosen up the purse strings a little bit. You know what? Everyone will even chip in a couple of bucks. Right. If you yeah, want. We have oh, yeah. to pay. I guess we'll pay. Scott Daniels will be rushing it. right down with his wallet wide open. Make it BYOB. You know what I'm bringing? <laughs> Diane Lane. <laughs> no. <laughs> For the entertainment. Then we can push her around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, not interested. I, I, I see Diane like Lane absolutely very no, much. No, I'm talking so, about a sit down, a man. sit down dinner. No. 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 Just uh, he just won't even consider it. Classy joint. White tablecloth. Couple of bottles of wine, man. Sounds stiff. To a me. gourmet yeah, right. meal. Hey, that's my idea of fun. Some entertainment. Well, you throw in parties. You didn't have. You didn't throw a sit down dinner. Sure, I did. Why, no, it, it was I always buffet. It was, it was a great party. I was in my apartment. Though. I had 130 right. people in my apartment. This was. I'm talking. And the about. other, but the other party was was only sit down. Robin um, threw me a party. It was beautiful. Sit down. And I don't it think it was party. stuffy. No. Well, 
Who was it? Well, I, I, I was had a great time. I had a, I had a great time. It was beautiful. Well, that stuff to live up to that party. That yeah. was, that was right. He could try to work on it, though. Grapes on the ceiling. <laughs> White tablecloth. Those grapes were delicious. <laughs> Black. I was eating the ceiling. The guy goes, no, that's a decoration. I go, I don't know. I, 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 I ate some of those I grapes, too. I pulled a few down. Me too. They were real. They were you right certainly not. could eat them. Yep. I go, hey, I'm hungry. You know? Nice white tablecloth, everyone get dressed up. Something crazy. Yeah. Get up, make a speech, talk about how you appreciate everyone, even though you stiff them. It'd be great. <laughs> 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 All right, I got to take a break. That's most important here. And then we'll come back and we're going to do the news. And I got to play you tapes of Regis from uh, New Year's Eve. Yeah, I want to see how he did. I would talk about Ellen DeGeneres because you feel that's the most important story. I just think people have the wrong idea about Ellen. Ellen is a player. She's a dude. She's she dresses like a dude. She, and she acts, acts like, like a dude. One. She had a midlife crisis. She was dating this hot chick. They had been living together for about five years, decorated a house. In fact, you know she has a compound with about four houses on it? Ellen oh, DeGeneres, right. yeah, she flies under the radar. Yeah. She's, she's becoming an Oprah. Well, yeah. how'd she get oh. that rich? I don't know, but But listen houses. to this. Let me tell you something. First of all, she looks like she smelled something sour. She <laughs> <laughs> always got that look on her face. <laughs> they gotta, there's got to be some plastic surgery to get rid of that look. Yeah, she needs that tip of her nose just straightened mm, out. Yeah. But she was with this hot chick. Her TV show takes off. She sees Ringo Starr's daughter-in-law, or s no, stepdaughter. No. Portia de Rossi is an actress. Oh. Hot, beautiful, blonde actress. Who lives with Ringo Starr's who stepdaughter. Who lives with Ringo Starr's stepdaughter. Portia de Rossi. She sees Portia de Rossi. Rossi, whatever. Hot, wet, <laughs> bitches. And she immediately, I guess her gaydar goes off. She goes, this is for me. She starts doing her, moves out the girlfriend, one, two, three. Well, they said there was one night they were at this party that got so hot and heavy between, they had to leave and go retire to the limo <laughs> so they could continue to do what they wanted to do. wonder what they were doing. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen's, yeah. Ellen's like a dude, like a rich guy, you know. Yeah. She, I guess him. she gets all naked with him. And... <laughs> well, doesn't it get boring? Face. I don't know. I'm. I. I. There's no end to you it. You have to have that mindset. I don't know. So she dumped the chick. Now the chick's talking about suing her for palimony. Just like well, a dude. It After five years, I thought it was seven was the law. I don't know, but don't she know. only took a week. She moved one out and the other one in. That just that quick. Yeah. Like, hey, I don't want you anymore. Get out. And she and moved the new one in. Then she redecorated her whole right house. In. To decorate out the old girlfriend. And they say this was the best. They say they want to start a family. Like, she just met this girl. She was with the other woman for five years. Couldn't decide whether to start a family or not. Start a family. Might need she, a penis there. Well, the, neither one of them want to have the baby. Right. So they're kind of trying to figure out exactly how they'll become parents. That's interesting. What do you yeah, think about, about that, the other bitch? Girlfriend. Maybe she wants to have the baby. Who? <laughs> Go back to the girlfriend she just dumped. Maybe she'll have it. There's a thought. But I thought that was funny. Yeah, Portia doesn't want to ruin her body, and Ellen has never considered having. No, because she's a dude. She's a man. She's the guy. She's got to work. I love her. Yeah, she wears a suit to work every That's day. That's a man, yeah. baby. With the sneakers, suit and sneakers is the lesbian uniform if you're the dude. And she and dan dancing. dances. Yeah, the, yeah she dancing. invented dancing. She really is a guy. She might be someone I could hang with. I'm telling you, you would like her. You two could uh, hmm. have a good hang together. Let's go adjust our balls in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. We'll come back. We'll do the news for you. I'm going to play some New Year's Eve stuff. I think of your balls. Hey, and man, you, you know what else? Did you, you see that uh, over the vacation, your Christmas card and Trump's Christmas card that you made, mm -hmm. they both went for the highest price. Oh, how much was it? It was, uh, I forget the exact price, but it was like around five grand. But you and Trump tied for the highest price. You know, wow. he put his his price up. He thinks he bought his own oh, card. Yeah. Maybe he did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that was, in the, that was in the paper over the break. I what an ego. Was, I thought that was pretty cool. He wasn't going to let you beat him. Thanks for helping us get to the break, Artie. We'll take a break right now. I'm a, I'm a graduate <laughs> of the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, Tom. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hello, and thanks for calling 1-800-MAN-ASS. Please listen to the following selections for hot, steamy talk from a short, fat man with glasses. Press 1. I'm scratching my balls. I caught myself. I won't do it again. I love you more. I'll save that for you. This hand, 
See, now that I'm not biting my nails, I have to find something for my hands to do. And, oh, if you were here, you would benefit from that oh so much. I'm going to be hugging you and kissing you in person. The Howard Stern Show. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. See if there's anything I got to tell you before you start the news. Yeah, I mean I got a million things. Hold on, I got a pile of crap. Okay, mentioned that already. Mentioned that already. Mentioned this already. Hey, yeah, got through a lot of stuff today. See that? You said I wouldn't do it. Yeah, we're moving right along. I didn't play you the tapes of me being part of all those lists and all the stuff no. that they put me on TV for. I'm still waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, I even saw you in the newspaper in a couple of lists. Yeah, I was on a lot of lists. A lot of men's Health had me on a list saying it was the best move, you know, career-wise ever, mm -hmm. which I thanked them for. I went over and I tried to spend Artie's gift certificate uh, at Barney's? Yeah. Artie got me a gift certificate. I think that's a cop-out. It is. Yeah, I, a gift. I, I, He's look, given up. How yeah. many times have I tried here? It's like, well, just give me cash so I can spend it anywhere I want. Like oh. it's, it, it's a $250 gift certificate. I said, just give me the money. Yeah, because now you have to go to a specific store. Uh -huh. I mean, I went out and bought him like a really nice blanket and this chocolate, big giant chocolate Santa and mm -hmm. whatever that was. Dude, I have tried to be thoughtful. So no, I you want didn't. You want me to list the gifts? You want me to list the gifts? So from now on, I'm getting you a gift card for 250 bucks. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah. I'll just give you 250 bucks. I'll give you cash. Yeah, just give me the cash. Um, by the way, that chocolate uh, Santa, I cut the head off and melted it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, it was fantastic. You made soup out of it. <laughs> I made, like, a what, chocolate what? soup. You really did? Yeah. yeah, I cut the head off and I melted it in a bowl. It was a solid chocolate Santa. <laughs> Fantastic. And what do you do? Just spoon up the chocolate after that? <laughs> yeah, well, you dunk. Sometimes you dunk a cookie in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Did you buy anything at Barney's? No, I, I went over there. And, uh, I don't know. It's it's a great so it was crowded and I just... I ended up buying Beth some a piece of jewelry, but I didn't use your gift card for that because then you would have bought a, a gift for Beth, not right. me. So you're still holding yeah. on to his. Yes. Uh, all right. I got a lot of stuff here to talk about. Mm. Maybe you should do the news, and I'll try and take some phone calls during the news. But right. I was going to read you the email. Anything good? Uh, here's a guy who uh, says, I saw Artie drunk in Vegas on the reruns of the E! Show. Thank you, because now I'm not going to drink anymore, and oh, I'm never going to sure drunk somebody. drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people criticize your 2004 death list. They said you left out. <laughs> this guy's funny. He goes, how could Robin leave out David Mann, the artist, and Indian Larry, the motorcycle builder? Oh, stop it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because everyone left them out? I still don't know they're dead. Although, here's one you did overlook that I have to agree with, President Ronald Reagan. Oh, that's true. He okay. wasn't on my list. Uh, here's another guy who says, Spider-Man 3 will be out May 2007. All Life. right. Got a long time to wait. Yeah, this is a guy who says, no one loves Charles Grodin. Uh, of all those people who drew Christmas cards that they auctioned off on eBay for charity, yeah. Grodin's they had to remove because... Nobody bid? No one bid on it. Wow. It's very sad. That's embarrassing. This is 20 billion emails warning us of Cabby, uh, you know, and saying stay away from him. You know, I said to Artie yesterday that I felt really left out that Cabby didn't have my phone number. Yeah. Hey, why don't you give it to him? <laughs> that would be smart. That would be a good move. There's never been anything you've more, been more happy to be left out of. Everything Cabby describes is classic for schizoaffective disorder. His delusions of the television talking directly to him are very common amongst patients we admit to the Institute of Psychiatry. He may feel his thoughts are being broadcast to others against his will. He has classical paranoid schizophrenia, this is from a doctor, with bipolar disorder. 
I hope he had a psychiatrist talk to the judge in his legal case. These types of patients often have difficulty managing finances. Oh. So maybe um, he, he, he all of his troubles stem from his discontinuation of his medications. If he has restarted on his meds, he will do much better. He is a candidate for a depot shot of his meds. Yeah, because he won't take them. He gets a shot once a week. Oh, is that what the depot shot is? Well, if you get that, yeah, it's because you won't take a pill. You can't be trusted. This is some guy. He's got some resume. He's MD, MSCR, CD, HRSA research fellow, master's candidate in clinical research, clinical instructor, Department of General Internal Medicine, blah, 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 blah. How many years yeah. did he spend in school? You know what? Get a job. <laughs> He's still yeah, in your school. Your parents are tired of paying. You're 70 years old. Your parents are still paying. <laughs> Bunch of uh, comments about um, us being off the air and all the Citadel stations. Uh, very, very upset. You know, tons of email. And people upset with the decision. So we've already dealt with that on the air. Uh, here's one that says, is Howard engaged? I was watching Beth's show with the fat guy from The Sopranos. <laughs> That's Steve Sharipa. Yeah. On December 21st. And you could see a ring on Beth's engagement finger. Really? She tried to hide it for most of the show, but she slipped up a few times, and you could clearly see it. Just wondering, WTF, Howard, have you finally caved? Well, no. But did you give her the ring she's wearing on that finger? She has some rings that I've given her, but I don't know if it's that one. And she, uh, I doubt she was trying to hide it. She's got, I gave her a ring. It doesn't fit right. She won't get it sized, so she keeps switching fingers. <laughs> uh, let's see. See if there's anything else good. There's a guy who wants a picture of Marianne from Brooklyn on the website. I have to get that on there. She's cute. She is cute. Yeah. I'm thinking of putting a picture of, like, Pam Anderson. And saying it's Marianne. Yeah. Here's the guy who was disappointed he went on a ski vacation, and Gary Delabate happened to be at Wyndham Mountain the same time he was. And <laughs> he didn't feel Gary gave him the proper respect. Oh. Because Gary just said hello to him. He was looking for more. What the hell else could he do? I understand he was with his family, but I felt he should have been more courteous to his fans hello, hello. and at least acknowledged us. While he was leaving, we said we loved the show. It was then when he seldom replied, thanks, and walked away. Well, what was he supposed to do? Tell Gary we were 17-year-old kids who were just trying to meet one of the cast members. Hello, hello. So there you go, you. I actually think I remember these guys, and I think that they were on the ski line with me. And instead of saying, hey, Gary, how you doing? I heard a bunch of guys going, booey, 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 toothy. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't want to interact with them? No, so, so then when they came by, they go, hey, man, we love the show. And I said, uh, great, thank you. Right, that was it. I said that seldomly, apparently. Who's writing? Anybody? Uh, I was probably just writing something, yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> hello, hello. It's coming right through. Well, these crossword puzzles don't do themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Gary being rude to a family. That ain't a monkey. No, Aiden, that's not a monkey. That's Bob. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. <laughs> Who's a better one? All right. Uh, I don't have that one anymore. No, I don't have that. There's a bunch of more. I'm so depressed they've taken you off in Syracuse. I don't know what to do. Any suggestions? Help. I'm going through terrible withdrawal. I love you, Howard. Well, we're showing up for work every day, but we're not on. Yeah. We can't do much about whether they broadcast us or not. Um, This one's... Uh, this is a fan letter. Here's a guy warning me not to get a nose job. When did you say you were going to? I guess I'm best of. I must have been complaining about my nose, which was uh. probably a show that was 10 years old or something. My girlfriend said you plan on having a nose job. I hope this isn't true. I believe that your nose is a trademark of yourself. <laughs> if you change yourself in that way, I believe you're giving in. You're becoming one of them. What I mean them is your arch rival, the FCC. I guess everyone on the FCC has had a nose job. <laughs> Please let me know that this isn't true. It's not true. Okay. Love the show. On E, could you please get rid of that picture, that naked picture of Benji that sits behind the couch? Horrible. That's a lot of people there. are offended by that. Yeah, that's been up there a while now. It might be due for a change. And a bunch of people saying, did you know that on Jay Leno, that Motley Crue dropped the F-bomb? And, and I'll just say it again. It doesn't make a difference. If it's on Jay Leno, it's fine. 
Only when it's here is there a problem. You're not even going to encourage people to report it anymore. Yeah, I don't even bother. Doesn't matter. FCC won't act on it. They're a bunch of hypocrites and liars. Uh, anyway, Robin, you were uh, ready to do the news, and uh, here is your theme. Yeah, I'll get to some phone calls during the news, too. All right. Uh, do you think this is a good turnout? Nearly 300 people, including stars like Sam Waterston, Waterston Chris Noth, 